How's it going guys? My name is Wanzi Burnett and welcome back to Katawa Shoujo and before anything else happens I'm gonna put my phone on silent because I'm expecting messages because I've been talking to a friend about Yu-Gi-Oh cards. That's always fun. Anyway, in the last episode we kind of made a choice and I feel like I may have made the wrong one because that's always what happens with me. I end up making the wrong choices. Let's just move that out of the way and yeah, okay. I'm worried, I'm worried, I'm worried, um, Emmy's gonna, Emmy's gonna break up with me, <laughs> I don't want to break up with Emmy. I'm still trying to sort out what happened on the track as we arrive in front of the nurse's office. Emmy raises her hand to knock, hesitates and turns to me, smiling guiltily. Hey, c can you do me a favour? Of course. Can you tell the nurse that I'll see him later? I just remembered that I've got some stuff to take care of before a class, so I really need to get moving. I peer at her closely, and she fidgets under my stare. Yeah, she's clearly just avoiding the nurse. That leg of hers. Well, whatever. I said I'd help, and so I will. But I'll make damn sure she sees the nurse before the day's out. Yeah, okay, I'll let him know. Amy looks like I've just given her a pony on Christmas. Thank you so much. You're the best, is Al. I'm rewarded for my complicity and her lie by a kiss that makes it all worth it. Or so I tell myself. As Emmy heads out of the building, trying hard not to let her limp show, I knock on the door of the office. Ah, his owl. Come on in. I don't see Emmy with you. She's not sick again, is she? From the tone of his voice, I don't think the nurse is expecting me to say, yes, she's ill. Uh, she said that she'd forgotten to do something, and so she had to skip out, but she'll see you later today. The nurse heaves an exasperated sigh. Honestly, that girl. Hmm? She's been avoiding me. Yesterday she was in and out of here without even taking off her prosthetics, and now this? Well, at least it's not just me, Emmy doesn't want worrying. That's a comfort, I guess. I still, I feel like I should say something about her leg. I said I'd lie for her, but she really needs to see him. Now that you mention it, she was limping pretty badly today, and last night as well. The nurse's eyes narrow at the word, last night. And what exactly were you two doing last night? We were, uh, on a date. The nurse raises his eyebrows as if surprised. Really? Interesting. Huh? Oh, nothing. His gaze turns thoughtful and then he grins at me. You don't think you could use some of that boyfriend charm to get her to come see me, do you? Of course. I was planning on doing that anyway. There's a casual plastic bag just rolling down the middle of my road. <laughs> okay. I think she's really hurt and she's just pretending she isn't. Hmm, yes, she does that. Afraid I'll make her stop running. Will you? I don't like to, but if it's bad enough that she's been limping, well, I guess I'll have to see what's wrong for myself before I make that call. I see. Emmy not allowed to run? Perish the thought. I don't know if she'd be able to function without running. Let me just casually do that. Make the lighting a little bit. Is that better or is that worse? I can't even tell. Probably should have done this before I started, but. Mm, it'll do, it'll do. I don't care fine. I don't know if she'd be able to function without running. No wonder she's reluctant to admit anything's wrong. Well, I'll make sure she sees you. Good. Oh, and before I forget, he grins at me again in what feels like a vaguely threatening manner. Don't forget that I know what medications you're on. You be careful around Emmy. Got it? Well, wow, he looks serious too. Got it. Don't hurt Emmy. Wouldn't dream of it. Grand. I'd hate for you to be late. Huh? Late as in the late Hizau Nakai. He frowns briefly, dissatisfied. Sounded better in my head. Well, at any rate, get out of here before you miss your first class. You've got things to do, I'm sure. Shoo! Shoo, get out of here! I've got things to do! <laughs> as I leave, I notice the nurse pulling out his phone and dialing a number. Mako, your daughter's being a pain in the ass again. I'd better head back to my room, or I really will be late. Hey, wasn't he supposed to check my heart rate? Damn it, you're gonna get his owl killed. The lunch bell sounds and I bring myself out of the stupor I slipped into during the morning's classes. My lack of sleep last night, coupled with the increased pace of this morning's run, has left me a little exhausted. Despite that, I find myself skipping stairs up to the roof. There's a thrill of excitement now, in addition to the pleasure one gets from eating lunch with one's friends. True, both Emmy and Rin are still my friends, but Emmy has become more than that now. Rin is back in her usual spot on the roof, almost as if she'd never been absent. Feeling better, I take it? A raised eyebrow is my reward for speaking. Better than what? Uh, better than you felt yesterday? 
Ring gives my question some serious thought. I'm not sure. I think I might have felt rather good for some of yesterday, but it's all fuzzy. Too much cold medicine? Well, I was asleep, and that usually is pretty good. But I can't remember what it feels like to be asleep because I'm not conscious for it. It's a real problem. Then again, if I knew how good it felt, I might not sleep anymore. But this way I keep trying, so I guess that's how I can keep from being overtired. An eternal mystery to keep you sleeping at night? Maybe mystery's the wrong word. Intangibility might be the proper way to describe it. I see. No, I don't see at all. I have no idea what she's talking about. But that's okay, since I rarely do. Do you remember what sleeping feels like? Like yesterday. Do you remember what you felt like sleeping yesterday? Well, I actually didn't get a lot of sleep yesterday. Hmm. Maybe that's because you remember subconsciously. Actually, I think I was worrying about Emmy. Doesn't Emmy worry enough about herself? I hadn't considered that, but it gives me pause. True, but would she ask for help if she needed it? Rin frowns and I raise an eyebrow. Will I get a proper answer? Probably not. Is, is there something to should be sh- uh, Damn it! Damn it! Her voice is so weird, I haven't done it for a while. Probably not. Is there something she should be asking for help with? Her leg, for starters. This seems to catch Rin's interest. Leg? It's hurt, but she won't see the nurse about it. Rin shakes her head in disapproval. You have to make her. Like she makes me go to class for her own good. Otherwise she could lose her legs again and that's just too weird. Losing things twice. Especially if you don't find them again to begin with. The less prosthetics are the same as finding something. But that's a different kind of lost, isn't it? I think so. Hmm, I wonder. Wonder what? Emmy seems to have snuck up on Rin and me, though Rin doesn't seem especially surprised, which in itself is surpri unsurprising, I suppose. Rin manages to sit herself upright quite expertly, throwing her upper body forward and using her momentum to right herself. I can do that! I can do that! It's one of those where uh, you don't use your hands to get yourself up, you just throw yourself up and use your neck and your forward body to use to get yourself up. I don't know why I ever learned to do that, but I did, so... <laughs> Rin manages to- oh yeah, you've, you've done that. Your leg, how's it feel? That earns me a frown and a bit of a glare. It's okay, I think. Not worth worrying about. Tell that to the nurse. He's quite insistent that you visit him, you know. Emmy pouts like I've just told her she's been grounded. He worries too much. It's not a big deal, just a little soreness. I try to resist rolling my eyes in exasperation. If it's nothing, then should, you should have no problem seeing him, right? Emmy narrows her, narrows her eyes suspiciously. Did he put you up to this? Well, maybe a little, but that's not the point. I would have reminded you to see him anyway. It would be terrible to see you really hurt and not doing anything about it. That would make it worse, and I don't really want to see you hurt, you know? Call me crazy, but I kind of would prefer to see you happy and healthy. With each statement, Emmy's frown fades a little more until eventually she's grinning, albeit a little shyly. Well, if you're going to put it that way, then I guess I'll have to see him. Otherwise, you'll keep worrying, and then I'll never hear the end of it, right? That's right, I'll keep bugging you about it. That might put a damper on our dates. How's the food, Hizal? Talk to the nurse. Uh, how's the food, Hizal? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. How was your day, Hizal? Talk to the nurse, Emmy. <laughs> Hizal, I think I'm ready to go all the- Talk to the nurse, Emmy. <laughs> oh my god. See? It doesn't work that well. Emmy giggles at my high-pitched rendition of her own voice and gives me an affectionate shove. My voice isn't that high, Jerk. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh my god. I thought it was pretty accurate. <laughs> that, that face! Emmy and I stare at Rin for a while before I burst into laughter. Emmy crosses her arms and huffs, mock offended. You're both jerks. Such vile cal calumnies. Calum what the? I've never seen that word before. That's a new one. Such vile calumnies from you, young woman. I'm stunned that you would call me, of all people, a jerk. Honestly, I just... I don't know what to think. Emmy sticks out her tongue at me. You ass. So Rin, how's the art club these days? Rin, seemingly as surprised by this sudden change of topic as I am, takes a minute to think before answering. I believe it is okay. Although Nomiya keeps telling me to work harder. But I don't think he understands my methods. He always struck me as slightly creepy. Rin ponders this statement for a while. I've never really noticed. But I don't pay much attention to him most days, so maybe that's why. 
How often do you meet? Thinking of joining his owl? What? Nah, I've already decided to join a club. Really? Which one? Well, it's not really much of a club, to be honest. Oh, you joined the tea club? No, I, uh, joined the science club, I think. Emmy looks highly confused. We have a science club? Uh, not really. It's just me. His owl? That's not a club. That's sitting in your room reading books. No, I mean, it's just me and Muto. I'm just the only student so far. Muto? Really? A thought strikes her. Oh, is that what you were talking about yesterday? Your meeting with Muto? Yeah, that was our first meeting, I guess. Emmy giggles. Nerd. NERD! <laughs> oh my god. Hey, I can't help being clever. You know, I could have used your help years ago. You should have had your heart attack earlier in life, is Al. I laugh and then realize this is probably one of the very rare times I've laughed about my heart attack. Hindsight. Yeah. The ringing of the bell ends that conversation. Hmm, guess we'd better go. There was like... <sighs> that was like a five minute conversation. So apparently they only get five minutes for lunch. Normally I wouldn't bother talking about that, but it's the fact that... It's not like any other event has happened. He has literally just gone up to the roof, spoke with them for five minutes, and an uninterrupted conversation, and then the bell has gone. That That's confusing for me. Come on, Rin. You too. Rin has apparently begun to doze off. Amy gives her a sharp bump. I almost had it. Sorry, but you need to go to... No, sorry, but you need to go to class. I disagree, but maybe if I nap in class, I'll get it this time. Changing location is sometimes helpful for that kind of thing. Neither Emmy or I bother asking what it is. As we arrive at my classroom, Emmy gives me a quick kiss and heads down the hallway, Rin in tow. I turn to enter the, ma the classroom to be met by the duo of Shizune and Misha. Dot dot dot. <laughs> Misha seems to be fighting a losing battle to keep from breaking into a fit of giggles when she translates M Shizune's latest rant. <laughs> While we are pleased, nay thrilled, to see how well you've managed to make new friends and forge relationships, and with such a cutie too, he chan I think that last part was probably Misha. Dot dot dot. We nevertheless feel compelled to politely remind you that public displays of affection are strictly forbidden. Really? That's disappointing, she chan By sh by section 8 of the Code of Conduct laid out in the student handbook. Dot dot dot. In this case, however, ignorance of the law may be your excuse, as we are freely lenient. Dot dot dot. And the paperwork required to punish the both of you would only add to the already mountainous work of a volume of work which confronts us, the sole members of the student council. And besides, you two are adorable together! Da da da. Therefore, I consider this a formal warning, and please refrain from such displays in the future. At least when Shizne can see you, He-Chan. This whole spiel is, pa is patently ridiculous that I can't help but reply in the same pompous manner. Well, I for one feel enlightened. I apologize profusely for my rash actions and will strive to contain my baser impulses, which I fear impel me towards such inappropriate displays of public affection. It is hardly my wish to burden an already overworked student council with such petty matters, and I will do my best to make sure your lives easier to make your lives easier in this matter in the future. At least when she's an ace watching. <laughs> The last line is delivered with a wink to Misha, who finally loses control of her laughter. Wah-ha-ha! Wah-ha-ha! Wario! Well said, He-Chan. Chucking a little- uh, chuckling a little myself, we enter the classroom. Wah-ha-ha! Wario! Do I missed! Let's never do that again. Class is uneventful, and after the final bell rings, I find myself alone with Muto again. So it looks like we've assembled for only the second meeting of the science club. Or is it the first? What do you think? Should we count yesterday as a meeting? Well, we did form the club yesterday, didn't we? That seems like club business, so we can safely call yesterday a meeting. Yuto smiles in his usual stilted and awkward way. I wonder if the muscles in his face are just not shaped correctly to let him smile naturally. You really do have a knack for this, I think. Logical thought processes, that is. I guess so? As a scientist speaks with authority, his owl, the answer here is, yes I do. When the world wants to know how it works, we tell it, even if all we've got is a decent hypothesis. But we must sound certain anyway, because we're the authorities on the subject, right? He chuckles, to go along with his awkward smile at his awkward joke. I'm doing my best not to grimace, but I don't think I'm being too successful. That's entirely false, of course. We know a lot, but sure, nobody's an expert on the, how the world works. If only because nobody can be sure, with no certainty, there are no experts. But we like to pretend sometimes. There's some things we can't be certain of, right? 
Yes, but no. We know gravity's there, for example. To illustrate, Muto picks up a pencil and drops it. Breaking the lead! Don't vandalize! See? Still there, but it's good to check every once in a while. That's why you'll still see researchers mucking about with gravity. We're pretty sure we know how it works, but there's always a chance that something isn't how we think it is. So you check and check and check. That's science in a nutshell, Hazal. His voice makes me need to yawn so badly. <laughs> the whole time I've listened feeling rather spellbound. Muta seems to really be passionate about this stuff. I think. It's hard to tell sometimes. How the world works. How human work. How the universe works. All these questions to be answered. And depending on what I go into, maybe I could even figure out a way to fix my heart. That said, I don't think that's a real priority for me. Besides, as we start discussing the book he gave me yesterday, I find myself more and more interested in that than my heart condition. <laughs> Damn. Before we even realize it, an hour's gone by. Well, let's call this meeting over for now, okay? We'll have a meeting tomorrow, or, uh, the day after. He considers this for a moment. Call it the day after. I've got a lot of grading to do. Okay, see you then. As I exit the classroom, I realize that I don't really have anything to do tonight. Emmy and I didn't make plans, so... I guess I'll go to the library. Beats doing homework in my room anyway. The library always seems cooler than the rest of the building. Probably to keep the books from getting damaged by excessive heat and humidity. Books are sturdy objects, but if you want to keep them in good condition, it takes a little effort. I've got several books that are, that are so well worn the pages are barely clinging to the spine. It seems impossible for them to still be usable, but if you handle them with care... I make my way to the main desk where I spot Yuko busying herself with something or another. She smiles at me as I enter and waves. Hello, Hazal. Good to see you again. What are you looking for this time? Nothing in particular. I guess I just didn't feel like going back to my room is all. Yuko nods. Well, if you're unoccupied, maybe you could help me look for something. Sure. What'd you need? Yuko brings a finger to her lips and looks around furtively. She seems to be looking for eavesdroppers. Come closer. I take a few hesitant steps forward while feeling distinctly unnerved. Yuko lowers her voice to a confidential whisper. I'm on the trail of the Yamaku Cat Burglar. The what? Shh. The walls have ears, his ow. Or they might. But listen, those missing books, remember them? Uh, yeah. Well, they weren't missing. They were stolen. I'm convinced of it. I remember you saying something of the sort earlier, but how do you know? Yuko leans in closer, and if possible, whispers even lower. Because I found one of his hiding places. You did what? Yuko looks triumphant. Found one of his stashes. It was under one of the stairwells in the boys' dorm. Three books I'd been looking for, all there. I'd suspected a thief before, but this proves it. So did you take back the books? Yuko looks as if I've just suggested she walk around naked. Are you nuts? He can't know I'm onto him. He might go to ground and evade capture. Uh, huh. So what do you need my help with, then? <laughs> Yuko casts another glance around the library. You've got to spy for me. Spy? Yeah, like when you're in the dorms, you know. Keep an eye out for suspicious activity. What constitutes suspicious anyway? I mean, Kenji's a pretty suspicious dude, but I'll wager he barely goes to class, much less sneaks into the library to pilfer books. So what's the harm in saying yes? At least it'll get me out of this weird conversation. Yeah, I can do that, no problem. <laughs> Yuko straightens off and claps excitedly. Great. Now hurry and take something else in case someone and talk about something else in case someone else comes in. How's the school treating you? Now how's the school treating you? Uh, pretty well actually. I've been running in the mornings with Amy Ibarazaki, right? Uh, yeah. How'd you know? I served uh, you two in the tea house, remember? I deduced that if you were going to run in with anyone, it would probably be her. She looks pleased with herself. Impressive. Anyway, yes, we've been running in the mornings. And, uh, we kind of started dating. Yuko claps her hands together excitedly. Really? That's great! I'll bet you two are great together. I love seeing people find one another like that, you know? Even though I thought to myself when you walked into the Shanghai that one time, I wonder if that kid will wind up with one of those girls. Really? Yuko doesn't seem to notice my somewhat weirded out tone and nods affirmatively. Yep, I could tell you'd wind up with one of them, you know. I've got an eye for that sort of thing. Of course, her expression droops slightly. I'm not so good at it myself. Oh, I'm sure that's not true. Oh, it's true. I met this guy once. We got along really great, but it turned out he was younger than me. And that was kind of weird, but not terribly so. What was really weird that he disappeared one day, and I've not seen him since then. 
Huh? That does seem kind of odd. Doesn't it? I hope it wasn't something I did. It was Kenji! She's been dating Kenji! It's got to be Kenji! It's perfect! It, it fits like a book! It's Kenji! You've been dating Kenji! Please tell me that's the truth. I want to, I want that, that- I ship it. I ship it so hard. I feel compelled to reassure her. I'm sure it wasn't. I intended to try and calm her down further, but the both of us jump in surprise at the ringing suddenly coming from my pocket. Yuko sighs to steady herself as I pull my phone from my pocket. I feel a little sheepish for indirectly causing the incident. Emmy, what's up? Oh, thank God. I haven't called your phone before, so I didn't know if this number would work or whether you'd pick up and I can't... Whoa there, Emmy. Slow down. What's wrong? There's a pause on the other side of the line, during which I can hear Emmy trying to control her breathing in order to calm down. Something's got her terribly agitated, and it's starting to agitate me. Can you just... Can you stop by? Like now? Or shortly after now? I really, really need to talk to you. There's a tone of pleading in the last sentence that I don't think I've ever heard from her. Of course, I'll be right there. Hold steady, okay? In my increasingly agitated state, I've apparently started saying things that don't quite make sense. Okay, I'll be okay. See you soon. I press the button to end the call before slipping the phone back into my pocket. I apologize to Yuko for running off, and run off. <laughs> and basically, I think this is where we're going to end it now. It's been about 20 minutes, and I'm kind of pressed for time right now. I want to get three of these done, and I need to get them done before about 2 o'clock, and it's like 20 past 1 now, so... I'm worried! I don't want Emmy to be upset or, or dying or something silly. But anyway, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, don't forget to hit that like button down below somewhere. And I will see you in the next episode. Have a great day and a great life. And I will see you later!